So can we also make the argument <laughs> that while well, women then cheat, but when they cheat, it's more of an emotional connection where for a guy, it could just be, I don't know. Yeah, I think um, obviously this is also an opinion, but I think that men are more animalistic and, you know, they... It's instinctual. More, yeah, instinctual. I think a woman cheats far before she cheats physically. Ooh. If she is emotionally in, attracted to you, you know, and if she's in a relationship, that that's, for me, it's some form of cheating, right? Because you, you have someone, how can you allow that that space to open up for someone else, right? And like I said, I mean, a woman can have sex with anyone, doesn't necessarily have to be invested emotionally, but I think that she will cheat way before she actually cheats physically. So would you consider that cheating if they're mentally, you know, absolutely texting other guys or for me, yes. entertaining other guys? For me, that I is- believe that is a form of cheating. People with trauma often try to diagnose their partners as a way to understand themselves leading to unnecessary drama and conflict in relationships. Women may start fights and threaten to leave their partners as a way to feel good again if their partner begs them to stay. But if their partner doesn't beg, it's seen as a sign that they are not committed. Here are the five types of women who will cheat on you. So type number one, the one with low self-esteem. So I'm talking about women who feel absolutely terrible about themselves and constantly need reasons or ways to feel good about themselves. And she needs to please herself in whatever way possible to get rid of that feeling of self-hatred. I know, you you should feel sad for her. A woman in this situation is likely to indulge in heavy drinking, frequent partying, drug abuse, and any other form of instant gratification that she can get her hands on. And self-loathing is one of these. Moreover, she's likely to flirt with other guys often, continue to use dating apps and social media platforms to meet people, and even reach out to her exes from time to time. Indulging in activities like these gives her the constant self-gratification that she so desperately craves. And if one... When a woman is struggling with low self-worth, it may spur them to look to external sources for the attention and validation that they and their partner are unable to create and sustain. Low self-esteem starts out looking like, why would anyone find me attractive? Then when someone starts to show that attention, it feels really good, says Skirtu. A woman who cheats rely on affairs to provide them with proof of their value or desirability. When one fling ends, it may cause them to feel neglected or worthless, so they pursue a new romantic interest, and the cycle continues. Society's increasing reliance on mobile phones and social media has created a culture of addiction to dopamine hits, which may contribute to infidelity in relationships. Having fewer followers but genuine connections can be more fulfilling and meaningful than having a large following with superficial relationships. Women who cheat often have a lack of remorse and justify their actions by putting their husbands down, allowing them to feel less guilty about their infidelity. Being insecure is a common trait among women, and it's important to have a handle over your insecurities and be kind to yourself. And if one day she wants to have an affair to make herself feel good, she most likely will not hesitate, okay? Type number two, the spoiled brat. Just like a woman with extremely low self-esteem, the spoiled brat is also someone who needs constant self-gratification. But her need stems from a different place. You see, a spoiled brat is a woman who has been put on a pedestal all of her life, who's gotten everything that she wants. She has never been told not to do something, and no one has called her out on her bad behaviors. Basically, all her life, she has had a free pass to do whatever she wants and face no repercussions whatsoever. So when you've had a life experience of that kind, you're likely to value self-gratification over anything else. And you're likely to overlook other people's feelings and desires and focus only on pleasing yourself. And this obviously doesn't work in a relationship because in a relationship or even in dating, you have to consider and respect each other's emotions and needs. And more importantly, you have to put your own desires aside at times and make compromises. And the spoiled brat archetype is unlikely to do so. So if things are not going too well in a relationship or if she's just plain bored, she might look elsewhere to fulfill her desires without thinking about the concept. While studies suggest that men who cheat are primarily motivated by sex, women who cheat tend to do so to fill an emotional need. And in the case of an emotional affair, 
sex isn't part of the equation at all. Whether the affair is physical or emotional in nature, a woman may cheat because they crave conversation, empathy, respect, devotion, adoration, support, or some other connection that's lacking in their current relationship. Some people convince themselves emotional is not a real affair. However, most sexual ones start emotional, says Skirtu. I find it pretty rare to have an only sexual affair without some emotions because they usually start as friends. That's how you start crossing boundaries and justify the behavior. Men are more likely to prioritize physical attractiveness in women, even if they possess other positive qualities like kindness and caring. The perception of attractiveness seems to be more complex for men, as they have multiple qualities that can contribute to their sexual appeal. Relationships with a certain type may be filled with drama, disrespect, and fights, highlighting the importance of choosing partners who respond to and care about you. Attachment theory suggests that early childhood relationships influence how we perceive and behave in our intimate relationships as adults. Depending on the care and nurturing, or lack thereof, that one receives as a child, they'll fall into one of three attachment styles as adults. Secure, having well-adjusted expectations and approaches to relationships. Anxious, exhibiting fear of abandonment. Or avoidant, preferring to retain their independence from others. Psychology Today. Who is likely to be unfaithful and why? People who identify with anxious and avoidant attachment styles are more likely to display characteristics that interfere with a healthy romantic relationship. Think clinginess and dismissiveness. Moreover, they're more likely to cheat as they seek out reassurance from a third-party partner or attempt to avoid the intimacy of the primary relationship. There's always a sense of what's on the other side and never fully being happy or secure in oneself. This type of person may struggle to be happy in any relationship. The first way to proceed here is raw honesty between the partners about what they want and need to be happy. The more real and honest, the more they will start to be authentic and feel their feelings again. While cheating is never warranted in a relationship, it's always best to end your partnership before picking one up with another person. It's helpful to understand the reasons why women may engage in infidelity. Generally speaking, the most common reasons why women cheat all link back to something missing in a relationship. So prioritizing your connection and ensuring you both are getting what you need from the partnership is key. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.